Hello, in this video we will learn about for loops in Java. Many times in our program we have to repeat the same step multiple times. Let's say print some star pattern or print the results of all students. For such kind of situations we use loops. Let's see the syntax of the for loop. It has four parts initialization, check condition, step counter and body of the loop. If your body has a single statement, you can write the statement directly after for. If you have a block of statements to loop, you need to enclose them in brackets. Let's see each part of the for loop in detail. Initialization sets the start condition for the loop. Check condition will determine when the loop will stop. The step counter increments or decrements the start value so that the loop is executed till the check condition is reached. Do note that if you type a semicolon after the loop, it will just fall through to next statement without looping any statements. This is called as null loop or bodiless loop. Let's see an example of for loop. Here we have start condition as 1 and end condition as less than or equal to 3 and increment counter of 1. So this loop will start from 1 and increment by 1 and execute 3 times. You can also run the same loop in reverse by giving start counter as 3, condition that it is greater than or equal to 1 and step counter as minus 1. This loop will also execute 3 times. If you give start counter as 7 and condition greater than equal to 5, then also the loop will execute 3 times. You can also do skip counting too, like let's say printing of even numbers till 5. Here you will add 2 to the step counter. Note that depending upon the program, within for loop you can omit some parameters or you can write more too. For example, here I am omitting doing initialization as my counter is initialized outside. You can also have 2 increment counters if you need. Let's see this in this example where we will print star 5 times. So the body of the loop has the print statement. Now we will create the for loop around it in such a way that it executes 5 times. Here in initialization, n is set to 1. The loop will execute till end condition is reached which is n less than equal to 5. The step counter will increment n by 1 every time so the loop will execute 5 times and print 5 stars. We also have infinite loop. Within the for loop, if you omit everything or omit counter so that the loop never ends, then it is called as infinite loop or endless loop. Let's now write some programs using for loop. First is write a program to find sum and product of first 5 numbers starting with 1. Here we will first initialize variable sum to 0 and product to 1. I will just explain a little later why 0 and 1. Let's put together the for loop now. Here we know starting number is 1, terminating condition is less than equal to 5 and increment is by 1. So this loop will execute 5 times. Within this loop we now have i which is incremented by 1 in each iteration of the loop which we can use for our sum and product calculation. When we enter the loop, the next number should get added to sum. So we will just use i and add it to our sum every time. Similarly, in the product, we will just multiply i with product. If you see here, we have initialized product to 1 because if we would have initialized it to 0, our product will be 0 after multiplication with 0. Hence for all your programs, initialize some value to 0 and product value to 1. If you closely see the product answer, it is the same as program to find factorial of a number. You can redo the program to take in input from the user and find the factorial using the for loop. You can use the increment counter or decrement counter to calculate the factorial as both will give the same answer. Now let's do a series program. 
Suppose you are asked to find sum of this series 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 6 and so on n times where n is entered by the user. Here like we saw earlier we will initialize sum to 0. Do note that the moment there is division or any decimal number involved we automatically move to double data type otherwise in integer division our decimal number will get truncated. We will set up the for loop till n which has been entered by the user. Now in the body we have to form our expression. Here our counter i is starting from 1 and incrementing by 1. But in our series the denominator is incrementing by 2. So we will multiply i by 2 every time to get the denominator value. This will give our answer. After the loop we will put in the print statement to print the sum. Now the series could also be 1 by 4 plus 1 by 9 plus 1 by 16 and so on. And if you see the denominator it is i into i. So we just have to change our expression to 1 by i into i. The series could also have a number taken in by the user like x plus x square plus x cube and so on till n. Here we will take in two inputs from the user n and x and then form the expression. As you see here we can easily use math.pow function with parameter of x and i. One another variant is where the sign changes. Alternate number is subtracted and then added. Here if you see for all even positions there is subtraction and odd positions there is addition. So in our for loop we will just put in a nested if. If i is even that is modulus 2 is 0 then we will do subtraction else we will do addition. Do go through all programs on for loop before you move to the next topic.